planning a trip to Cape Town or have always had an interest in traveling to South Africa, then look no further. We're covering everything you need to know before booking a trip to this incredible city. We'll be covering everything from entry requirements, where to stay, what to pack, how to get around, daily budgets, what to do, what not to do, and of course, safety. If you found any of the information in this video helpful, we would really appreciate it if you considered giving this video a like and subscribing for more videos like this. Cape Town, South Africa, arguably one of the most beautiful cities in the world and winner of numerous tourism awards, has massively grown in popularity in recent years. We're South African and we can safely say it's our favorite part of South Africa and we want to share it with you to make sure you have the best time in this city, whether you're a digital nomad, a content creator or a tourist. In fact, we love this city so much that we've decided to invite you to travel with us. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click the link above for more information. There's a multitude of reasons to visit Cape Town, from the jaw-dropping mountains, pristine beaches to the unique wildlife. This is one destination you will never forget. All right, let's start this guide off with how to get to Cape Town. You'll want to book a flight to Cape Town International Airport or alternatively to OR Tambo in Johannesburg and then catch a two hour domestic flight down to Cape Town. Sometimes that can work out cheaper. If you're going to be flying domestically in South Africa, then we can recommend you use FlySafe Air or Lyft. We often use travelstart.co.za to book our flights. As for visas, we know pretty much all countries in North America, Europe and Australia are granted a free 90 day visa on arrival in the airport in Cape Town. How great is that? If you're not from one of those countries though, then you can contact your nearest embassy or travel agent and ask them what your visa requirements are. Health insurance is not needed for entry, but we do suggest that you travel with it because Medical is quite expensive here in Cape Town and we do not want you to land up in one of our government hospitals. Next up is currency. The currency used in South Africa is South African rands. It's about 17 rand to the dollar and 18 rand to the euro. A dollar here can get you a small bottle of coke and a packet of crisps basically. Once you get through immigration, there are numerous money exchange booths you can use at the airport, although we don't recommend it due to the high rates at the airport and the fact that cash is seldomly used here in South Africa. If you would like to exchange money, there are countless money exchange booths all over the city and in fact quite a couple at the VNA waterfront, which is probably going to be the most convenient for you. To pay for things, you'll be mostly using your credit card, tapping your phone, Apple Pay and the commonly used app Snapscan. Payment systems are very advanced here, but if you do want to pay cash, then there are ATMs everywhere. The common ones, most popular ones are FNB, Capitec, ABSA and Nedbank. There are no scams or dodgy ATMs in the city, so don't worry about that. If you are drawing, maybe draw around a thousand rand, no more than that and never carry more than a thousand rand on you. Next up is best time to visit Cape Town. The best time to visit Cape Town is September to April in the summer months. Although May to September is pretty good too because it's whale season and it's the perfect weather to wine and dine indoors, to go hiking and to spend some time in cute little cabins out in nature. In summer, the temperatures range between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius and 15 to 25 degrees in the winter. We do not get snow here unless you go up into the mountains in the heart of winter. March to October is considered the off season so prices will be cheaper and it'll be a lot less busy. December to February is peak season. There's a lot of foreign and local tourists in Cape Town. The beaches will be full, the restaurants will be too. There'll be lots of traffic and prices will be a lot more expensive during this period. But it is such a vibe. We love the summer and the December to February period. Although our absolute favorite period is March to May. This is when it, the weather's still really good, but then the pricing comes down and it's a little less busy, but there is still a vibe. Next up is what to pack. Cape Town weather is unpredictable for sure. We've got four seasons here, summer, winter, spring and autumn, and you can experience all of them in one day sometimes. So be sure to pack according to the season, but make sure you've always got a windbreaker or a sweater on you at all times. 
because the wind in Cape Town is kind of annoying and chilly and it can come at random times while you're on the beach or on a hike. If you want to surf, you will need a wetsuit if you're staying in the water for a long period of time. This is a cold Atlantic Ocean, it's just too cold for you to stay in there for long periods. Then do pack a sweater and track pants for the colder evenings or when there's a cold front that randomly comes in. Besides that, just pack your usual hot weather summer attire like shorts, sandals, t-shirts, bathing suits, towels, etc. Then for shoes, we do recommend a good pair of running shoes with good grip alongside your sandals. Hiking boots are definitely not really required unless you are an avid trekker. We've done perfectly fine here with just a normal pair of shoes. Let's go over the rest of the stuff you need to pack very quickly. Raincoat or a windbreaker. A hat. Bring bug spray to ward off the mosquitoes and flies. This is Africa after all. <laughs> sun cream for the African sun. It is very intense here. A lock for your belongings or your luggage. An international driving permit if you plan to rent a car or a bike. A quick dry towel because things take long to dry here. I don't know why. And then something cool like rollerblades, a skateboard or a boosted board or something like that because Cape Town is such a vibe for that. There's even Promenade Mondays where they arrange events for you to come bring your wheels and go down the promenade. It's just awesome. So if you've got that at home, do bring one. Bring all important medication or antibiotics. Our medical is quite strict and most high level medication requires a script from the doctor. So to avoid a visit to the doctor, just bring all your medication with Unfortunately, you. Unfortunately, it's not like Southeast Asia where you can get antibiotics over the counter at a pharmacy. If you do forget anything, don't worry, you'll find everything here, specifically at our VNA waterfront. And Amazon is coming here soon, so there's that. For now, Take A Lot is probably the best bet for online purchases. Apps to download, the nerd will take it away. Uber obviously works as normal here and is the best app we recommend to order a car or food delivery online. There is another app called Bolt which we don't recommend so please avoid that if you can. Next up Waze or Google Maps. The latter you'll be using to find the best beaches, restaurants, cafes etc in your area. As always be sure to download Google Maps offline just in case you need to navigate while on the move and you don't have internet connection. We do have our Cape Town resource pack available for you to purchase on our website that includes all of our Google links to all the best cafes, restaurants, sites, everything. So check the link down in the description. Then you're going to want to get the MTN or Vodacom apps to manage your SIM card data. You can use these apps to top up using your credit card, but more on SIM cards later. Snapscan. This is used to buy things all over the city, especially at our farmers markets. We recommend downloading the app and adding a credit card to this and then you'll be able to scan the QR codes to pay for things everywhere. Then you're going to want to get the Checkers in 60 or Pick and Pay ASAP apps. These we use to order groceries straight to our door for the days when we're feeling very lazy. Obviously this only applies to you if you're here for an extended period of time. If you're a tourist then you don't need these apps. Booking.com, as per usual, this is what we use to book our accommodation. We like to have it downloaded on our phones because we can manage our bookings as we go through our trips. Property24, this is an app that's really good for if you're trying to find long-term accommodation. So if you're a nomad that's going 6 to 12 months, you'll need Property24. Eskom Push. <sighs> This is an app we unfortunately have to use to manage when we have rolling blackouts in our country, but more on that later. And then last but not least is the Entertainer app. This is an app that gives you two for one discounts on all sorts of restaurants and attractions in the city. It'll save you money, so definitely download that. Next up is accommodation. Cape Town offers a wide variety of different accommodations from eight bedroom villas in Camps Bay and Clifton to hostels in the city to normal hotels to Airbnbs and budget accommodation. You can really find everything. We even have co-living spaces here and co-working spaces. Neighbor Goods and Curiosity are our two favorite brands in the city. We book 90% of our accommodation on Airbnb and the rest on book Booking.com. Lately though, we found the pricing on Airbnb to be crazy. We are filming this video in January 2023 and the prices on Airbnb are, yeah, lit. So we recommend doing Booking.com or to use Facebook groups like Hayes Hayes Cape Town and also Property24 to book directly with agents and homeowners. Other sites for short-term rentals are Lacker Slab and Hostelworld.com. 
Back to the co-living spots for our fellow digital nomads. We did mention our favorite brands, Neighbor Goods and Curiosity, but these are very sought after, so make sure you're booking them way in advance. They're sought after for a reason though, because number one, a lot of them don't have load shedding. We'll talk more about that later on. Number two, they have really good internet, fiber internet and co-working spaces that you can use that are amazing. They've got everything from weekly cleaning, laundry services, uh, cool meetups in the cities to make friends and yeah, they are just awesome. So if you're coming to Cape Town, we honestly recommend these co-living spaces. Short term or long term, you'll benefit a lot from them. Obviously, there are tons of nice chain hotels here as well. Those will all be linked in our resource pack down in the description below. All right, next section is transportation. For e-hailing, we obviously recommend Uber. It's just the easiest and the safest, to be honest. The cost of a standard Uber ride from the airport to the city is around 150 Rand. So that's about $10 for a 20 minute drive. It's pretty good. At the airport, there'll be a lot of independent taxi drivers. We don't have any experience with using these guys. We usually just go with Uber. It's basically just the safest and most convenient. So that's what we use all the time. Alternatively though, you can organize a shuttle through your hotel or wherever you're staying. If you're planning a one to two week trip and you're basically saying in Cape Town, then Uber will do you just fine. The average ride on Uber is about 50 to 100 Rand. If you're planning a trip that's longer, maybe two to three weeks and you want to visit places in and around Cape Town, even maybe go to the garden route, which we suggest that you do because it's super beautiful. Then we suggest that you hire a car. You'll be driving longer distances and it'll work out cheaper than doing Uber rides. For renting a car, we would recommend rent a cheapie Avis and Hertz, they're all pretty good. Car hire is definitely a bit on the expensive side, but it will give you a lot more freedom and abilities to explore beyond the city. And currently the petrol prices right now are around 21 Rand per liter. We do have public transport bus systems. The bus system here is called My City Bus. They are very good and safe to use and will get you around the city for a lot cheaper than Uber or renting a car. Then lastly, if you want to experience all of the top touristy destinations around Cape Town, we really recommend you take a multi-day pass on the Red Bus Tour. It's a really great way to visit all of the touristy spots over a short period of time. And to get acquainted with the city and figure out which areas you like the most for when you decide to come back to Cape Town and live here, because you will. Cape Town, unfortunately, doesn't have an underground metro system, although we do have overland trains, but they are not really commonly used. There's a really nice train that runs from the CBD all the way to Musenberg, Kalk Bay, and Simonstown, and it's super beautiful down there. Yeah, and Simonstown, by the way, is where the Penguin Beach is. Next up is budget. As always, your budget really does depend on the type of traveler you are and your itinerary. But we find Cape Town to be as affordable, like on par with the pricing in Bali. And as we've mentioned before, you can do Bali and Cape Town as luxuriously as you want. And you can take it to new levels of expensive here in Cape Town for sure. If you book a modest, comfortable accommodation like we usually do, you're looking at about $35 per day for your accommodation, which will take your daily budget to around $60 to $80. That's around $1,800 to $2,400 for the month, which is very comfortable for two people. That $2,400 will cover all food, accommodation, experiences, transportation, pretty much everything. And obviously it'll be a little bit less if you're just one person. Let's go over the different budget options. The backpacker, you're looking at paying $30 to $50 a day. Then comfortable, as we already mentioned, is around $60 to $100 a day. Then if you want to be a bit luxurious, you're looking at around $200 plus 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 per day. <laughs> As we mentioned before, because Cape Town is so seasonal, the pricing will fluctuate depending on what time of year you're traveling in. December to Jan, Feb, you're looking at quite high pricing. Especially on the accommodation side. Obviously, the longer you stay, the more you'll save on monthly deals with gym memberships, accommodation, transport, all sorts. All right, let's talk about traffic. The traffic in Cape Town is only really bad if you're entering or leaving the city during rush hour. Sometimes you'll also get bad traffic in the Clifton and Camps Bay areas because of a lot of people going to those beaches and trying to park their cars on the small narrow streets. 
Parking is definitely an issue in Cape Town as well. That's one of the reasons why there is a lot of traffic. The really bad traffic though is usually only in the December period from December 15th to January 7th when everybody is down here on local school holidays. But rest assured, most commutes across the city shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes. Next up is language and culture. English, Afrikaans and Rosa are the three main languages spoken here but everyone basically speaks English. We can't even advise you to try and learn a specific language because Cape Town is such a hot pot of different cultures, languages and people from all over the world that you might even speak the wrong language to somebody. It's hard to gauge. But if you do want to learn a local language, because that's always fun, then I think Fosa is a really good one and the locals will love you if you speak their language to them. Do be warned though, not everyone does speak Fosa, so kind of maybe ask somebody if they speak that language and then go for it. Afrikaans is also a really, a really cool language. A lot of people in Cape Town speak Afrikaans, so you can learn that too. I can speak it all, but... Yeah, I can Yeah. <laughs> South Africa is known as the rainbow nation. So we have all sorts of religions, cultures, genders, etc. here. Absolutely anyone is welcome. Cape Town is a totally cosmopolitan city. So you're very likely to run into a lot of international tourists and even maybe some people from your hometown that are living here permanently and running a business from here. We're such a rainbow city that we even have pride flags everywhere and we have a pride street and yeah, everyone is welcome in Cape Town. Next up, where to go? We have a full video on this of our top 15 things to do here in Cape Town. You can go and check that out linked above. We cover the most iconic things to do. And we also have our top 10 beaches video as well. So you can watch that linked above as well. But essentially our favorite things to do are Clifton, Camps Bay and Lindadno for beaches. Obviously the Table Mountain and surrounds. Hart Bay for seals, seafood and boating things. Sea Point for Lion's Head, Promenade and restaurants. Cape Point for the southwesternmost point and nature reserve. The Kirstenbosch Botanical Gardens, Aranya Sikh Market, Wine Farms at Constantia, Stellenbosch and Franschhoek. The V&A Waterfront and Surrounds. There are even Big Five game reserves just two hours outside of Cape Town. Aquila Game Reserve is one of them. And then as for where to stay as a first timer in Cape Town, our favorite areas are Sea Point, Green Point, Devatakant, Gardens, Camps Bay, Clifton, Bantry Bay, etc. etc. We'll make an entirely different video sharing all the best areas and analyzing them because they're actually all very different. All right, next up is what to eat while you're here in Cape Town. Flip. Cape Town has some really good food and it's got food from basically everywhere in the whole world. It's such a hot pot for food. Some local favorites though in Cape Town are Gatsby's, samosas, any Cape Malay dishes in and around Bocarp, fish and chips from basically everywhere in Hout Bay. And then of course our national dish, which is Babuti, you have to try that. As we mentioned, they've got restaurants from all over the world. So there's all types of really, really good quality restaurants in and around Camps Bay. Kloof Street in the V&A. We recommend booking a dinner experience at Gold Restaurant or eat at Karibu in the V&A for authentic African food. If you're a fan of seafood, Cape Town is known for its fresh seafood. And if you're interested in a little drive up the coast, we can highly recommend the Strandluerpe. Otherwise, if you want something a bit closer, the Harbour House at the V&A waterfront comes highly recommended. Even Ocean Basket is great. It's one of our chain restaurants. But they have really good seafood as well. And then of course we have South African food and drinks and snacks that you should try as well. Number one is a traditional South African braai, which is a barbecue. It's our life. Frying is life. We're going to braai. Yeah, you must do braai. Do. Claire didn't pay attention in school. Clearly not. Then we've also got biltong, cream soda, Milk tart, malva pudding, malva pudding, oh. <laughs> quickie, knickknacks, flings, and then of course our world class wines. Guys, there's honestly so many restaurants, we'd actually have to make a separate video about it. All right, next up water and ice. Technically, the drinking water in Cape Town is perfectly safe to drink. In fact, South Africa has been known to have some of the highest quality tap water in the world. Although recently the government have issued a few warnings to boil your water before drinking or drink bottled. 
If you are concerned about this, then please chat to your hotel or host where you're staying. They will give you the latest updates on whether the tap water is safe to drink. If not, then bottled water is readily available everywhere. And if you want to save the earth and environment and not use plastic, then you can bring your own water filter. All right, next up is alcohol and prices. Unfortunately, South Africa has quite the drinking culture, I must say. Why well, unfortunate? <laughs> and it's home to one of the best breweries in the world in SA Brewery, so you will definitely find amazing beers and ciders here. Not to mention, Cape Town is actually home to a really good craft beer scene, so be sure to check out some of our microbreweries littered all over the city. As you know, South Africa is known for its incredible wine, and Cape Town is basically home to all the wine fields in the country. You could visit a wine field every day of the month and still not cover all of them. We highly recommend doing wine tastings at some of our favorite wine fields. Constantia is probably the best and it's so affordable. It's about $10 to have a full five set wine tasting experience. And sometimes they have pairings of chocolate and candy floss and bultong and all sorts. Yeah, it's delicious. We even have gin tasting places too. So yes, alcohol is part of the culture here. It's fun. In terms of the pricing, a draft beer shouldn't cost you more than about 40 Rand at a pub. A bottle of wine can cost you anywhere from about 80 to 1000 Rand, depending on the vintage. Cocktails at a bar or a restaurant would usually cost you about 60 to 120 Rand. And of course, you can go to Spa, Tops, Liquor City, any of our bottle stores to get all of the above for a lot cheaper. Just bear in mind, these places usually close at around 8 p.m. during the week and 6 p.m. on Sundays. For a cool pub, check out Forrester's Arms. It's actually one of the oldest in the city. I think it's one of the oldest in the country. Whoa. Next up is vaccinations. In terms of COVID vaccines, you no longer need one to visit South Africa. Hooray! You also don't need to do PCR testing or do any type of quarantine. It's basically open gates now. Yes, thank goodness. And in terms of other vaccinations, we would just suggest doing hepatitis A and B. We always travel to foreign countries with those anyway. There is no malaria in Cape Town, so unless you plan on traveling up to the Kruger Park area after you visit Cape Town, you will not need malaria pills. On the topic of vaccinations and things, next up is travel insurance. As with all international travel, we always suggest that you travel with a travel insurance. To assist you if you have any medical emergencies, you have to be hospitalized or airlifted, or if you miss a flight, or you lose your luggage, you always want to be covered by travel insurance. Here in Cape Town, you're going to be doing a lot of adventure activities like hiking, going into the ocean, and medical is quite expensive here in Cape Town as well, and our government hospitals are not even an option, so you definitely want to be covered. We always travel with Safety Wing Travel Insurance. They're the best, they've saved our butts multiple times, so check the link down in the description. Next up is length of stay. We recommend about two weeks if you can afford the time to do so. Otherwise, one week will be sufficient to cover most of the touristy spots. If you're planning to do the garden route or any of the areas outside of Cape Town, then we recommend three to four weeks, to be honest. There is so much to do here in Cape Town. You can keep busy for every day of the month if you plan to do four weeks. And if you're a digital nomad wanting to come settle here, we recommend three to six months and preferably during the summer months. You're getting 90 days free visa, you may as well use up the 90 days, you know? <laughs> Next up is electricity and oh my goodness, what a topic. Be sure to pack the appropriate travel plug adapters that fits the local sockets. The type M and C sockets are the official standard in South Africa and they look like this. Type N plugs also work. Now, moving on to discussing the elephant in the room, which is load shedding. Load shedding, put simply, is basically rolling blackouts that happen up to three times per day for two to four hours. It can be really hard to keep track of these blackouts, so that's why we recommend downloading the Eskom to push. It'll help you with your scheduling. A lot of the hotels, restaurants, and cafes do have backup electricity, but there will be times where you are affected by this. It is a big downside to visiting Cape Town and completely embarrassing to be honest, but it is the reality we live in following decades of misuse and poor maintenance at many of our power plants. So how do we manage this? Well, first of all, use the app to manage your days accordingly. So when the electricity does go out, 
Make sure you're going out into nature, go on a hike, go to the beach. That's what we often do. We don't sit in the room and worry about the electricity not being on. And then of course, stay in these co-living spaces and stay in hotels and places that have generators because that'll make it so much better and then you don't even have to worry about load shedding at all. It goes without saying though, because we have electricity shortages, please mind your usage, turn off the lights if you're not in the room, etc. It's actually not too bad as long as you're prepared. Okay, now for SIM card and internet. We have a number of cell phone providers here. The most popular ones are Vodacom and MTN. They both have excellent coverage all over the city, so pick the one that looks best to you. We personally use MTN and we don't have any complaints about it. Data prices in the country are not that cheap though, with one gigabyte costing you about 85 Rand. With MTN though, you can look out for specials like these everyday gigs, which will give you one gig per day for 299 Rand, which is pretty good. When getting a SIM card, we suggest you find a store at the airport because these stores are more geared to assisting foreigners. But if you forget, I think you can definitely try at the VNA Waterfront too. Head to an MTN store at the VNA Waterfront and make sure you're bringing your proof of residence and your passport or ID. In terms of internet, most of the city is connected by high speed fiber networks and there's basically Wi-Fi almost everywhere, unless there's load shedding. Speeds are usually between 20 megabytes per second and all the way up to one gigabit per second. So it's really, really fast and stable. You can almost get away with not buying a SIM card, although we still would recommend one for when you are commuting using Uber throughout the city. International driver permit. You will definitely need one of these if you are wanting to hire a car or rent a motorbike or a scooter. Policing in Cape Town is quite strict and thorough, so make sure you always have your paperwork on you at all times. Next up is tipping. There is a definite tipping culture here in Cape Town. If you're eating out here in Cape Town, most of the time you'll have to figure out the tip yourself and calculate it. It's generally 10 to 15% of your bill. Some restaurants do include the tip in the bill, so just make sure you check. And then at our shopping malls and centers, we have these car guards that look after your cars for you. It's up to you whether you want to tip them or not. We generally do about 10 Rand, five to 10 Rand is good. And then also save a bit of coin in your car for when you are filling up at a gas station. We have gas station attendants who do the petrol for you and we usually tip them around 10 Rand. All right, next up is pharmacy. We have pharmacies all over the city. We have Clicks and Discam. They are our two biggest chains and you can pretty much find all types of medication in our pharmacies. However, they are quite expensive and because we mentioned already that medical is so strict here in South Africa, you will need prescriptions for things like antibiotics and anxiety medications and things like that. But they do offer a whole bunch of over-the-counter stuff. So if you just have a general headache or you need a nose spray or eye drops, you can find them at this chem or clicks. Next up is laundry. There are a number of laundry shops all over the city. Our favorite is Love My Laundry. We usually call these guys up on WhatsApp. General load for two people usually costs us about 250 Rand. So it's definitely not as cheap as Bali, but it's it's affordable. And if you're staying in a self-catering unit or an Airbnb, most of the time you'll actually have a washing machine in there as well. So then you don't have to do laundry. Try to avoid doing your laundry in a hotel because they'll charge you per piece and it will be very expensive as it is with most of the world. All right, next up is weather and natural disasters. Cape Town is a Mediterranean climate. The only thing of concern is probably the wet and windy winters. And then there is a month of the year where it's super windy I think it's in August. We'll put it on the screen here now. That's the only thing you have to worry about. We do not have any natural disasters here in South Africa. Probably the only other thing to worry about is droughts and wildfires. wildfires. We do often experience water shortages here in Cape Town. So take note of that and use your water sparingly while you're here. Short showers guys. Or a dip in the ocean instead. <laughs> Next up is what to skip. We often do these for travelers so that they don't waste their time and money on certain activities and things. These are often touchy subjects, but first of all, we recommend that you skip Bocop if you're a solo traveler. It can be a bit dodgy there. There will be people that harass you. It is a very historical area and beautiful. It's these colorful houses on the streets. It is worth it if you're in a group for sure, but don't go alone. You will be harassed and it's not very safe. If you are there just for the photos and the beautiful colors, there's a nice alternative just down the road, which is a lot safer. The pin for that location will be in the resource pack. Next up is, woo, 
some people are not going to agree, Cape Point Nature Reserve. Hold on though. We say this because the entrance for Cape Point Nature Reserve for foreigners is quite high. It's quite expensive. And you're basically just there to see some ostriches, some eland, and baboons. There's not a heck of a lot of wildlife there. And then there's also a lighthouse there as well. If you're on a strict budget, then skip this for it's sure. It's also quite far away. You'll have to pay quite a bit to get there in an Uber. True. So if you're on a tight budget and you don't have a lot of time, skip Cape Point Nature Reserve. And then finally, Camps Bay Beach. We don't suggest that you go and relax and chill on Camps Bay Beach. It's actually pretty filthy because of a lot of the local tourists that go and party there and dirty the beach. Only go to Camps Bay Beach if you're there to visit the restaurants and go on the strip, but in terms of the actual beach and sand itself, it's looking quite bad at the moment. Next up is things we recommend though. Number one is Lion's Head Hike. It has some of the best views of the entire city. Table Mountain Hike is also really good, but it is a little bit more challenging. Second thing is Boulders Beach. We are so proud of this beach. It is stunning and the penguins are so freaking cute. Definitely make your way to Simon's Town to see them. Third thing that we really love in Cape Town and we do it basically two, three times a week is a dip in Saunders Rock Pool. It's so much fun. It's a vibe. You have to do it. And then in terms of eating and stuff, Gold Restaurant, we already mentioned it. It's awesome. There's African dances, 14 course dinner experience. You have to do it. It's cool. You won't just be eating Cape Town cuisine. It's cuisine from all over Africa. So it's really highly recommended. They even paint your face. It's cute. <laughs> One of our final points is a topic that everyone wants us to talk about, and that is safety. First of all, we want to say that it should not hinder you from coming to South Africa and to Cape Town. The safety in Cape Town is very similar to the big cities like London, New York City, and even Melbourne. You just have to be vigilant of your belongings at all times. We will do a different video about safety, but essentially you need to try and avoid going out at night. And if you do want to go out at night, be sure to take transport that takes you from your place of residence to where you want to go and back. Try to avoid walking on the streets at night. That is basically where the pickpocketing and crime actually happens. You're perfectly safe during the day. It's at night when it happens. Most of the incidences you hear about is when tourists are really drunk, walking the streets alone at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's gonna happen. Pickpockets will happen. You'll be held up, etc. It's just what happens in most big cities that late at night. So don't do it. Don't walk at night. Also, another thing, if you have a rental car, do not leave anything in your car at night because they will steal anything. Even if it's a yoga mat or a sweater or something, they will bash your window in and steal it. So just don't do it. Unfortunately, there are a lot of unemployed homeless people that are living in Cape Town and obviously they want a comfortable yoga mat or a sweater to keep them warm at night. So they will break in if they see that on your back seat. You can reduce the risk of crime by not flashing your valuables such as cash, cameras, jewelry, etc. And never stand on the side of the road with your phone out as well. There will be opportunists that will run by and steal it. But that happens in Bali as well. And then finally, our safety tip is don't accept help from people at ATMs. Cape Town is a city designed for tourists. There are cameras everywhere, security guards, police patrols, everything. They're here to ensure that you are safe. So don't even worry and just be vigilant and you'll be perfectly fine here. Next section is the other sections. Other things to note, please do not throw your cigarettes out of your car or absolutely anywhere because of the wildfire situation. We want to try and avoid any disasters happening. Don't just show up at the cable car mid morning on a nice summer day and expect to get a ride up straight away. They will be queuing. So to avoid this, try and book your tickets online for most of the big touristy attractions. Then, as we said in Bocop, don't be taken by stories from the beggars. They love to engage and talk, talk, talk. And although most are well-meaning and in difficult positions, just try to be polite and rather not engage them extensively. If you do want to engage them and help them out, that's totally your choice majority of people just say for safety concerns to just ignore these people unfortunately 
And then finally, don't attempt to get to the airport during rush hour. As we said before, leaving the city from between 5 and 7 p.m. is a bit of a nightmare as everyone goes back home. And with the airport being situated out of the city, you will likely turn a 20 minute trip into a two hour one. So just make sure if you are flying during that time, you give yourself enough time to get to the airport. And then the last section is scams. We always talk about this in our videos and we are happy to say in South Africa, there's no real scams that we're aware of. 99% of the people here are absolutely lovely. So there's no real big scams you need to worry about. And that ladies and gentlemen, is it. We have finally gotten through everything you need to know about visiting Cape Town. We hope you come here. We hope you enjoy it. And if you're ever here, do DM us on Instagram. We'll be happy to answer your questions or put them down in the comments below. And yeah, we'll answer them there too. We hope you enjoy your time in the mother city. We can't wait for you to get chat. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps. Lots of love. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.